Hey, this is Max. Welcome back to another CSR2 video. So I'm here in the live lobby with the Venom GT Spider. Um, so a few things you might want to take note right away. I am running 706 performance points at only 912 EVO points. What does that mean? Um, I've done a video on Lobby Advantage and you should check that video out if you want to know what's the best way to win in live without getting your car bumped. This is a reverse situation. I have a much more upgraded car. Uh, with much lower EVO. The advantage I have here is that this is what they call a dyno beater. Okay, and there are probably 80% of tier 5 cars in the game can be set up around this level, uh, you know, or maybe lower, maybe higher. But with EVO drops, you can beat dyno with 80% of the cars in the game. But beating dyno with it doesn't make it a great live racer. What it does is it lets you win some races against other cars. Uh, Particularly, you see this being used a lot when somebody's short on cash and they really want to beat you for some money. They're willing to kill their car for the sake of uh, winning some money. Now, we know these cars can get bumped, but if you play it carefully, and this is where some practice and uh, I wouldn't call it skill, but I would more, more or less call it practicing the uh, timing of slowing down can really help you survive longer with a car like this because you can win by a hair and as long as you do that you don't get bumped as easily now this car dyno is a 10.5 something so understand I'm still beating dyno to beat almost any car in this lobby I have to beat dyno it doesn't have any lobby advantage and this is where lobby advantage versus no lobby advantage really start to show itself with lobby advantage I can run slower than my dyno all the time and win but with a no lobby advantage car, I have to run faster than Dino all the time to win. And eventually, uh, the game will pick that up and say, hey, 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 you should be in a faster lobby. Now, understand there is a range to a lobby. So 10.399 to 10.5 range tend to be one lobby. So if you figure as long as you run close to 10.999, I mean 999, 399 or slower, you should be okay. But... It also means that when you face cars that can get lobby advantage and run well under the lobby range, you really can't win. Now, can I beat this guy? Yes, I can. Um, but now I'm going to have to beat my dyno by 3 tenths to beat him. And that's not always worthwhile. So that puts you at the risk of being moved to a faster lobby, whereas he probably is just running slightly slower than his dyno or his dyno which isn't that difficult to do. So here I'm going to use nitrous so I can push the uh, speed up. Um, I'm definitely well ahead of him this time. Okay. And I still beat him because my car can do 9.5. This is 10.5 lobby. So running these times isn't the issue. The issue is he can run that time safely. I cannot. And that's the key issue. The other thing I'm doing is I'm, I'm running in and out lobby racing and I'm going to see if and when the computer kicks me, right? Sooner or later, you are going to get kicked. Um, it's just a matter of time. But let's see when. Okay, that's the key, right? Because people tell me, oh, well, I raced this guy a few times. He beat me, but I he didn't get kicked. Well, he may not be running too far out of the lobby range. He may just be running like I am, a little under, but not too crazy. And that still will keep you in the lobby for some time. You're not going to instantly get kicked unless I run well beyond the lobby range, which can happen. Um, I can run some pretty crazy... Whoop, he beat me. I can run some pretty crazy under times, but I choose not to. I, I want to try to run as close as possible to where I could run and still kind of stay within the range. I mean, 10.5, like I said, you can run 10.3s and an occasional temp high 10.2s without instantly getting bumped. Uh, but sooner or later, you will get bumped. Okay. Now, when you can't get a challenge to get accepted, there's a chance when the races refuse you move lobby. In this case, I didn't. I'm still here. Um, he's still here, obviously, because he probably didn't run under his time, but he left. Okay. So now we see ah, the bot popped up. So when these guys show up, that usually means the computer's thinking about kicking you. Oh, oh, this guy's been running kind of quick. He, he may not belong here. Um, it, uh, they also show up when other players leave, of course. But So if, if I'm racing a car that's down-tuned like this, uh, where it's a dino buster, I tend to watch 
for bots. Uh, if I see a bot, I'm going to grab them and raise them because that'll help me maintain a slight adjustment in my average. Understand that slowing down average is a lot harder than making it faster. Let's say you average 10.2 and you want to move it to 10.5 and you did three 10.2s, you're going to have to do a bunch of 11s to get to 10.5. So understand that moving the average down isn't as easy as moving it quicker. So getting bumped is much easier than setting yourself back from being bumped. Okay. So this is a Foley Elite, Foley Maxed LC, which generally has lobby advantage. And again, probably could give me a hard time. Um, he's going to start catching up around here really fast. I'm going to slow slightly and let him pass me because I, I, I really don't want to get bumped yet. Um, now, you watch how fast he was going at the end. So 10.337 at 361, I was doing 202 slowing down. You got to watch these, you know, again, you got to watch which car you race in order to use these cars effectively. With a car like this, you're always going to be ahead in the beginning. So you have to learn how to calculate the slowdown. You don't want to slow down too early, but you don't want to slow down too late uh, because you won't slow your car. But if you slow down too early, you won't be able to uh, actually get a win. So there's a little trick there with the balancing. So there isn't that many people left in this lobby. Yeah, I can challenge a new guy. Oh, he's busy. I can always challenge whoever the new guy is coming in. Is I strong killer. Uh, I strong killer is not strong enough to want to race me. Let's see. We can pick. Uh, we can try Jared. Right, Jared's new, so Jared probably will be okay accepting the challenge, or maybe not. Oh, he did. Okay. So, newer players tend not to have as good setups, or they have uh, they haven't figured out shift patterns, etc. So their car tend to be easier to run against and again this is something veteran players will know and play with I mean they, they'll challenge new players partly because they feel they can get them uh, this guy's car is pretty fast so that means I'm actually moving into faster and faster opponents so 10.321 I had to edge myself up a little bit to win that again it's it's doable it's just that the control has to be there um, and now what I'm going to do is I'm going to leave and come back and you watch. I probably won't see this guy. I'm going to end up in a slightly different lobby when I leave because th my averages has been more 10.3, 10.2. And I'm going to show you the dyno real quick. It's a 10.5. Okay. So it's 10.53, which is low 10.5. So that puts me in the 10.3 to 4 lobby anyway. One thing I would like to do would be able to move this car into a slightly higher dyno um, or even lower but unfortunately I'm stuck right I'm, I'm kind of stuck with this I, now I can play with this and move me move my car to like a 10.7 uh, but I don't think I'm gonna necessarily face 10.7 cars in fact even if I do a 10.68 which should move me one lobby down let's see if opponents are still running 10.3s this is this is all stuff you can play with in tuning to make your live racer slightly more effective um, you want to see same lobby even though I'm a whole s almost a second s uh, tenth of a second slower so it doesn't help to move the car back down um, and if I move it I can't move it any faster so I'm really stuck uh, and so I just have to roll with whatever I got here as far as opponents are concerned so temp back to 10.532 I will go back in one more time. Notice I slowed my lobby down and I was in the same lobby. That's other, another point you should learn is that um, there's a range to a lobby. So even if your car technically is slowed down, notice I changed lobby now. Now I'm in a faster lobby. I can tell from looking at these cars. These are not guys I've raced before. They're all slightly better car not cars but the racers are slightly more experienced i can see that i'm going to jump out and jump back in again um again i have to move my dyno down to 10.68 to stay with the same group but if i move it back to 10.5 i moved up a group okay um, i can almost guarantee these guys can run low 10.2s to 10.1s if not even better so what i'm going to do is i'm going to run professor amy to try to put myself back to 
the other lobby and to do that I'm gonna have to beat Professor Amy by just a little bit um, that's the bump down technique I use all the time if I have a car like this where I need to bump my way back down uh, what I do is I run bots and keep it really tight uh, and that way my average run win is 11.7 my temp 2 plus 11.7 is 22.9 divided by 2 you know that gives you kind of how I'm trying to lower the average now this guy I'm gonna run him but I'm gonna lose because I this is a very good car it has huge lobby advantage this guy probably is a 9.9 .9 car uh, in this lobby if not faster so I'm I'm gonna push him a little bit but I'm not going to try to win this because it'll hurt me because I'm actually trying to get out of this lobby and go back to a slower one so let me I'm gonna push like I said but just let him win okay so see what he ran 9.9 .9, see that's kind of what I expected he would be able to run um, and this tells me right now that I'm in the 10 10 2 uh, I moved up a whole lobby I moved from like 10 3 9 to 10 2 lobby and therefore it's gonna be nothing but losing in here for me so I'm gonna go ahead and uh, refuse this and leave because I lost one and I ran a 11 and then I'm going to go back and see if maybe, maybe I can get back to my 10.3 uh, lobby with my 10.5 car, which would be nice, but not sure. I'm pretty sure I'm going to be in this lobby still. Oh, I, I changed lobby, but it doesn't mean I changed to a slower lobby. I'm going to jump out and in one more time. This is the unfortunate reality of running a car that's high in performance point, low in EVO. You will be bounced around all the time until it sort of settles in some way uh, but with all the lobby advantage cars that are now being run in the lobby like these guys you're, you're just not going to get very far with uh, dino beaters for long-term use now again I can beat people I'm not saying I cannot I'm just not going to be able to keep my car stable for long-term use this way Okay, so he's still coming up on me. So this he's a 10.2 car as well. I would say that's a 10.1 run out of him. 10.172. Um, See, so I'm, I'm still at a, a severe disadvantage here after running the car because I am now bumped. And it only took a few wins to do it. I even gave some losses. That's another point I want to just kind of address before I end the video. In the current uh, meta, losing doesn't seem to do as much as winning. If you don't want to get bumped, you better control how you win, not how you lose. You can lose all you want. It won't necessarily bump you back down. You have to win running slow. That's the key. Um, and that's why, again, I have kind of retired cars like this Venom GT, simply because while I can get away with some of that for a while, it just isn't worth it to start off with no lobby advantage and then also have to run slow and lose a bunch by accident so to speak when you know you have other much better options out there so if you're thinking about getting the Venom GT Spider uh, it's a cool car it is a dino buster but unfortunately um, it just isn't all that great uh, as far as live racing anymore and I even I like this one a lot too the regular Venom GT uh, beautiful car with the uh, satin black and red I really wish these cars were still viable. I would be happy to run them, but the truth is they're just not. Well, anyway, that is my um, kind of take and, uh, well, I guess it would be my review and take on this car for live racing, but also hopefully give you some uh, information about what to watch for when you're trying to run higher performance point, lower EVO cars. Even if your car does not be dyno, the same situation applies to newer players who are trying to kind of partial build tier fives with a lot of upgrades but not a lot of fusions. You end up in the same exact situation and you will also have a car that one, doesn't lobby well, two, hard to win, and three, you probably get bumped after you do win. So that is why low performance point high EVO is the focus on any build for any car until you have more parts to really get beyond certain level of upgrades. 
If you have any questions about this um, kind of thing in the game, feel free to ask in the comments. I can always make updated videos to address more uh, sp uh, specific points in this kind of situation and hopefully give you more clarity. If you like the video, leave a like. If you like my uh, videos and would like to get notified when I put up new ones, uh, subscribe, hit the bell, and you'll get notifications when I put up new videos. And as always, thank you for watching my videos. I'll catch you next time.